Hello and welcome to One Football, or if you're French, bonjour, or if you're Croatian, howdy partner. <laughs> my name is Rob Armstrong and I'm sat here with my good friend, arguably best friend, Ooh. Matt Froelich. He doesn't feel the same about me, though, It's a big call. I'm not sure your friends back home will be too happy. No. It's uh, happening. It's a very competitive what happens? What happens on the holidays? <laughs> Stays on the holiday. We're working. This isn't holiday, although it has felt like a holiday watching the World Cup <laughs> for the last month. It has been that enjoyable. I've enjoyed almost every second of it, except for the incredibly heartbreaking pain I experienced Yeah, up to the week. semi-final, it was all fun. Yeah. It was all fun until, uh, until someone had to go and ruin it. But we're not here, we're not here to talk about me being at the top of the list or winning an award. No. A certain best friend list. We're here for another, another set of awards. The World Cup Awards, as what sponsored else? and <laughs> organised by One Football. Not sponsored, just said. <laughs> we, we've spoken them. It's SPO, but not sponsored, right? There you go, that's Hashtag words. Ad. Bit of words for you. <laughs> I use letters regularly. Uh, let, let's, let's talk about this World Cup, because obviously, you know, we, we've been talking about it non-stop for pretty much the last, mm. I guess, two months, three months. Um, and, and now it, it's done. What else it's, is there? It's over. Uh, we have to go back to sort of spurious transfer rumours. Uh, and, then, and then the Premier League starts and everything's fine. But. Looking back on this World Cup, let's talk about um, you know your best goalkeepers, your best players, your biggest flops, your biggest disappointments, things like that. We're just going to cover a few of them to look back over this wonderful, wonderful month of football action. Uh, where should we start? I, I reckon we start with, let's start on a positive note. A positive. And let's go for best player. Now, I think there's quite a few you can look oh at Oh my here. God. The best player, yeah. I think you're, you're, you're basically looking in Belgium, Croatia, France's teams. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'm gonna because I, I think, I think even, even though even though obviously Belgium went out of the semi-finals, I think mm. Hazard was brilliant, like, lit up the tournament at times. Yeah, uh, De Bruyne at times was brilliant. Maybe didn't turn up too much for the semi-final, yeah, but yeah, I guess yeah. none of them did. France, Croatia, just just full of full of real talent. Croatia, so good in the group stages. Um, you know, had a slightly less simple path in the knockout rounds. Went to penalties a couple of times, mm. and then broke our hearts. But uh, I think that's what makes them so good, though. Yeah, I think I think that's what gives my my vote for player of the tournament to Luka Modric. I, I, think. I, I am also going for Luka Modric. Oh, we've agreed. Oh, which is funny because apparently so the English media was like, yeah. oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I, I okay, I'll, I'll I'll throw a. I'll throw a vote in for Hazard as well, but I, personally, Hazard, yeah. I think it's Modric. And I think, I think this is the stage where you see like the world-class players. And it's mm. the world-class players that make the difference. It's the world-class players that get you to finals and win you trophies and things. So for me, he, he was just sort of instrumental in everything yeah. Croatia did. You know, that, that's not a team that was necessarily expected to, well, certainly wasn't expected to do as well as they did. No, um, they were a dark horse, but never a, never a shoe-in for the final. Not by any stretch. No. No, I, I'd agree. I'd, Definitely agree with Modric. I do think, however, in some of the other, as it comes to some of the other best players, there's almost um, a sort of chasm of between. Spelt chasm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. No idea. Wow. Um, of, of players who you kind of expect to do well, so they're always going to be in with a shout. When you mention Hazard, you may not mention what he's done specifically, but he's always going to be in there because when he gets the ball, that's just how he plays football. Yeah. He just generally is that good. But I think with Modric, he really has gone above and beyond. In that kind of Croatian, Croatian team. Um, what about best, very much what about best defender ever to play football, Dejan Lovren? Well, I mean, it goes without saying. I mean, when you, you know, when you call yourself the best player, and when you speak about yourself in third person like The Rock does, you must be a bit of a big deal. So he mm. must be the best player ever. I just don't see any other. The Rock's never had his career saved by Virgil Van Dijk, though. <laughs> uh, so, so we're both going for Modric. <laughs> you know, I think, yeah. I think that's fair enough. I'm sure. You in the comments will maybe someone disagree, maybe will someone agree. I, th I think we may have overlooked a few of the France players there, mm. but Fran France are a bit of a funny one early in the tournament, weren't they? They took kind of, even though they obviously breezed, uh, they strolled through their career, yeah. they took a little while to get going. Um, Griezmann's sort of work ethic really, really showed during the knockout yeah. stages, and I think he's, he's I th actually I think done a lot better than maybe, you know, he, he wasn't, in, you know, he was never in the top scoring kind of. 
bracket, but he he, uh, no, he has put the shifts in as well. And and, and Mbappe was yeah, of course incredible. Mbappe as well. Yeah. In fact, so if we're both going for Modric for best yeah. player, I think I'm going to move through to breakthrough player, and I'm going to I'm going to go for Kylian Mbappe because we were talking about it earlier and mm. saying what young player has come through and is going to get the huge move now. And I know Mbappe has already kind of had his huge move, but I think he might be getting a huge error one. <laughs> You think this was his tournament? I'm, I'm, hmm. I'm not doubting that he hasn't been amazing at Mbappe, but in terms of breakthrough, I'm not sure he's breaking through. For me, it's always someone who's relatively unknown before the tournament. So I, I understand what he you was, mean. He is he's unknown, broken he was, through. He was, he's 19, man. He's broken through the world barrier, and yeah. now he is fully fit for every competition in the world yeah. if he can do it. Um, I think there's been a few other good ones as well. I was particularly impressed with Ante Rebic of Croatia, who played a massive part in the tournament, in you know Croatia's run to the final. And destroying Willy Caballero's self-esteem and career. <laughs> with a banging finish. Mm. However, he's the kind of breakthrough because not many people knew who he was before the tournament, playing at Frankfurt. Yeah. And even before you know they won the German Cup this year, before that amazing performance from him in the final, he would have been even lesser known. And now, and now to be, you know, touted with a move to Spurs or Arsenal or a few others for around 50 million, that for me constitutes more of a breakthrough than Mbappe. I'm not downplaying Mbappe by any stretch of the imagination. He could even win best player. Yeah. But I think with, with breakthrough, in terms of a lesser known player, yeah, I think I think Rebic is definitely up there. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a curveball here as well and go for the South Korean keeper, Joe. Jo yeah, to be fair. <laughs> Big Joe. To, to, Way man, better than Joe like Hart Joe, or yeah. Brazilian Joe. <laughs> wow, there's a throwback. Yeah, Brazilian, Brazilian Joe. Joe yeah. He was oh. basically the 2010 version of Brazilian Fred, <laughs> who was the 2014 version of Brazilian Jesus. Yeah, that's that's pretty much true. They are. Uh, I know. I will give you that as well. I think it was Joe, or it's pronounced Cho. Cho. Yeah. I think a bit of a CH J dilemma mm, wow. going on there. There's a lot <laughs> of CH stuff going on here. What with yeah. chasm. What with chasm. Not I, pronounced Chasm. I, I had like Chasm as in Kazan in my head. Ruben Kazan. Yeah, yeah. Ruben, Ruben. Ruben, Ruben, Ruben Kazan, Kazan. isn't a team name. But I, I will give him a shout out as well because South Korea did do, a, did do pretty good. Um, and also I think Yerimina, although he moved to Barcelona, he did kind of burst on the international stage. Three goals as well is pretty good. Yeah, he's got, got a lot of goals, but I don't know if he was, I don't, yeah. I he did think, score a lot of yeah, goals. Coming from that. the unknown to the... Fair enough. Uh, Speaking of Joe slash Joe, high reaches. let's go on to Golden Glove because I only just the other day saw, about three days after it actually happened, mm. saw the save that Daniel Subasic made from Harry Kane that we all thought where he just rattled it into the... Yeah, it was offside though. I know everyone no, it talks wasn't about because, it. Because the flag, the, the flag stayed down, so he only put it up after the play was made, so it would have gone to VAR. Oh, okay, is that how it officially worked? That's how it... Well, was yeah, it was a bad save. It was... Mm. Incredible, and that's mm. after he's got Croatia through two penalty shootouts, one of which he was injured for. Well, yeah, with a hammy injury, yeah. No, I'll give him that. I am going to disagree though with the Golden Glove. Okay. I'm going to give it to Hugo Lloris. Lloris? Purely because as well, I think the pressure on him is slightly more. Not only is he playing for France, mm. with the huge pressure on their shoulders anyway, he's also captain Yeah. as well. And captaining a side with the egos of the likes of, you know, Griezmann, Pogba, Usman Dembele, some, some real... <laughs> That was a solid worker, I love him. Um, but yeah, I think, I think Hugo Lloris especially being so fantastic and the way that they've, the way they've played and I know that he obviously conceded three against Argentina in one game, mm. barring an absolute worldie from Di Maria. There is no yeah. one stopping that at the yeah. competition. I think, I think Hugo Lloris just, just ahead of Subasic. I think Courtois was brilliant as well. Uh, Pickford also, mm. also did very well at yeah. points as well, but Courtois made some huge, huge saves yeah. for, for Belgium. He did have that moment where he let a ball in through his legs, but it led to nothing. So I, th I think it has to be out of those four, because when you get to the semi-finals, you can't get there with a crap keeper. Yeah. You just, you can't cover up a bad keeper for three group games, two knockout games, ending up in the semi-final. Mm. You have to have someone strong. I'm, I'm going to go for Subasic, though, because the, okay. the, the, the penalty shootouts thing. Oh yeah, true. I'll, I'll stick with Lloris, but... Uh, but I win. Comments. Comment section, Comments. people. Super Sitch or Larice. Do your thing, send Let's your abuse. Us. <laughs> no. Okay, then. They're sending abuse. I think I'm going to send a bit of abuse for this award, the very prestigious award, uh, aptly titled 
shittest bloke. Uh, <laughs> this is just like the worst human being at the World <laughs> Cup. And, you know, what some people might say, any of the video referees. They actually seem to do quite a good job in the end. <laughs> I'm going to go for, and not very surprising, Mr. Neymar. But, the worst yeah. human being at the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, of course, shittest bloke. <laughs> I will, I will though, because I'd say I got a lot of abuse for ranting at Colombian fans for sort of, you know, not accepting that they lost, but the referee was quite poor. So whoever that ref was in the Colombia-England game, yeah, he's probably he got a bit... Lost, he's lost probably, control of that one. He's probably got a shit bloke hammer hanging over his head. Yeah, I mean, there I think, was quite a lot of... There was some really good refereeing, mm. sometimes when VAR, VAR looked like it really worked, yeah. and sometimes it didn't, but none of them. None of them justified Compare. Neymar diving again and again and again. And I'll tell you what, Brazil should have had a penalty in that Belgium game. And it went to VAR. Yeah. And they made the wrong choice. And the there choice. is a part of me that thinks it's the boy that cried wolf kind of thing. And that is, that yeah, I think, I think no. they just sort of dismissed it because Neymar kind of led that culture of diving yeah. in the Brazilian team. And the rolling and the pretending he was injured when someone stood near him. All those things, I just thought... The shit is bloke. I, I also think he made himself more unpopular at this World Cup, which isn't meant to happen when you're a star of a World Cup, especially in the, in the last diving. one, obviously it was in Brazil. He was the only one that escaped the mm. seven... Obviously he was injured for the seven one, but he was the only member of that team that escaped kind of absolute hatred because he wasn't there. And I think his, his stock went down this World Cup. Because Coutinho, for the most part, seemed to perform more than him. Uh, Neymar's diving was ridiculous at times. And all, all this talk of the sort of Real Madrid move, I honestly, yeah. I don't think Real Madrid... Oh, they'd be far I think, better off I think, bringing Mbappe in. I think Real far Madrid would off. want Neymar less after the World Cup than they did before. He's still... The thing is, he's so brilliant. But he, he really... But this is what pisses me off, down. is he has the arrogance to say, you know, I'm going to try this trick and whatever. If you're going to produce all these skills, do all these wonderful moments, back it up with a bit of honesty and with a bit of decency. You might actually get away with them more often. I, the thing is, I understand I understand players get that they all do it. Yeah. Even bloody Harry Maguire does it. And I know I know it's a thing that happens with everyone, but you, you don't expect to see one player try it more than one time. In a the diving. Tournament, yeah, but with, Maguire, alone more than with one time Maguire, he's very top-heavy, so if he leans too far in one direction, his body I mean, can't. Maguire's dive was <laughs> also back. unacceptable. They didn't, they yeah, didn't no. do many bookings for dives in this World Cup. I noticed that people weren't getting booked for diving very much. I think if people got booked for diving, there'd be a whole lot more than the four red cards given out yeah. throughout the whole tournament, which yeah. is pretty pretty low, actually, have, considering. Have you got any other nominations for shittest yes, bloke? Yes, nomination for shittest bloke, and I, and I hate him, and I hate him at City, and I hate him at Argentina, and he, he pisses me off so much as Nicolas Otamendi. I can't stand the bloke. He, lo he loved having a good old kick at someone's head, Yeah, he? and why is it, someone's fouled on the floor, you just gotta run over and boot the ball in their back like a twat. Like, he's just so, he's the kind of Ooh, scumbag that Danny you just over here. Yeah, oh my God, Otamendi does my Otamendi head sitting over there in Argentina yeah. with his trotters up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with his trotters up. Where is he? Should be held accountable. <laughs> he should be held to account for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, but with Neymar, <laughs> with Neymar, I can overlook it because I think, oh, you know what, Neymar, you did that, but then you f sort it out with some good skills. Neymar, I mean, Otamendi, I just can't even look past it and think, you know what, but you're a decent player. I just, ah, oh, just 100% ball bag. You, you know what, f <laughs> Oh, He's got my Otamendi. vote. Otamendi's got my vote for shitbag of the tournament. Whatever you said. <laughs> Shittest bloke. I'll tell you what, Matt. I've seen more passion you there. <laughs> it annoys seen. me. Your man who focuses on negatives rather than positives. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's something you need it to just, work it on. It just needs to be... As a person. <laughs> it just needs to be said. You need Much to, like you when need David Unsworth got given the caretaker job at Everton. Not acceptable. Mm. Whatsoever. But that's for another time. You need to see a cup as half full, not half empty, my friend. That's another story. Some people are good. Neymar isn't. <laughs> uh, right, let's move on to some team awards now. Uh, yeah. let, let's start with, let's go for crowd pleasers. The, the crowd pleasers. Well, I mean, there was quite a few. I think in the early stages of the tournament, I definitely put Senegal up there. I think their whole vibe, not just necessarily their play, but their kind of, you know, their atmosphere around them and their fans. And you know, there was all these videos of them dancing and training and sort of really having the correct spirit in which they played the game. I think Senegal were massive crowd pleasers. Mm. I didn't think they were particularly amazing to watch. Um, but yeah, in terms of crowd pleasing. I would say up into... And uh, if, you, if you take the Poland game out, um, 
Japan. But there was also well, that yeah. sort of unforgivable <laughs> passing round the back, doing nothing, just trying to stay the same result and going Ooh. through on the yellow cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But their, their result against, uh, was it Colombia? And mm. then the game against Belgium was really exciting. To be fair, Belgium, yeah. had, Belgium had a few exciting games. Yeah, and no, I think they're crowd pleased as well. There was something sort of uh, slightly innocent about Belgium. There wasn't a sort of egotistical side to them that everyone, you know, that would piss people off as with Neymar, as with a few other teams. Certainly England, you know, there was the kind of arrogance that would annoy people. But Belgium, yeah, crowd pleasers as well. Yeah. I think for sure, I mean... I reckon England were crowd pleasers back home as well. Yeah, just in one country. <laughs> just in one place. No, but I think... I promise you, lads, It's Coming Home is a song about being bad, by the way. Yeah. We're, when we say It's Coming Home, we're laughing at ourselves. Don't it's, worry. It's the self-loathing <laughs> that Britain is other, made on. Other than me, no one thought we were going to win the World Cup. Um, <laughs> all right, let's Look go that. for... Uh, that was my biggest disappointment. Yeah. But let's talk about the players uh, again and the biggest disappointment as a player. So I think, I think Lionel Messi is an easy yeah, one to yeah, pick yeah, out here. Pick. But did actually turn it on for a couple of the games. I'm going to go for a bit of an outside one here, Robert Lewandowski. Yeah, considering that he, he said he wanted to leave Bayern and thought he could make his big move to Real Madrid, go and then show it. Show why he's allowed to go to Real Madrid. Mm. And now that he's had such a poor tournament, I don't think it's on. Yeah, it's Poland, cool. Poland very disappointing in the tournament. Bed Bednarek scored their only goal, didn't they? So Lewandowski, Lewandowski Yeah, was Lewandowski pretty poor. Actually, terrible. going back to the Messi thing, I know Messi is quite an easy one to pick on. Um, especially when so much is expected of you, it's quite easy to disappoint if mm. you don't reach the high level. Higuain, I thought, was really, really poor. And got more starts than I thought. Did he start? I yeah, yeah, yeah. But Higuain started the last two group games after Aguero started the first and scored and the, the knockout against France. And That manager's mental. Yeah. And I also think, and it's so not his fault because he didn't play much, but I hope to see him more in the same team as Paolo Dybala. The fact he got 20 minutes at the end of is each game I don't, did he is, even is get unbelievable. That much? Probably not. I thought he didn't even come on. I mean, it's obviously hard to be disappointed in him, but I'm disappointed in the fact that he didn't play like yeah. I expected. George Sampaoli is the biggest disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> massively. Absolutely. Like, what? Like, that team he had. I, I know everyone's saying, oh, yeah, the defence is a shambles or whatever, but I mean, the players they had to choose from oh. weren't bad. You know, there, there were worse, far worse squads mm. there. They were hopeless. Awful. Yeah. Awful. I think they were, they, were, they were pretty disappointing. I will say as well, I mean, mm, I'm not sure. I mean, I know Ronaldo had a really good group stage. Um, yeah, I, I think it's Ronaldo. Like, Again, he's that, a victim that, of his own Port high standards. That Portugal team is worse than the Argentina team. Player for player, that Portugal team you reckon, is, yeah. They're both is not very, great. very top heavy. Yeah. And Portugal aren't that good up top either. <laughs> Yeah, true. It's like, just Ronaldo. Yeah. I think he's he's a, he's a victim of how good he's been because everyone expects him to carry a team, yeah. whatever. Whereas he was good in the group stage, but didn't quite put it through. Um, so I think who else was a major disappointment? But yeah, I think the Argentinian front line as a whole, Higuain, Dybala, Aguero, Messi, it pretty much showed. I mean, yeah. you could go on to the Germany team, but yeah, well, pretty much all of them. I think we'll, we'll go on to the Germany team here because we're going to go for biggest flop. Uh, Argentina, As a team? Argentina yeah. were poor, Germany, awful, Germany, dreadful, Spain, also, bit, bit Ooh, rubbish. Yeah. Now Spain lost to Russia, who were the hosts, but were also the lowest ranked team in the tournament, mm. people wise. So they're not, they're not the worst team in the tournament, they never were, but they were ranked yeah. the lowest. Uh, they also only managed one win in their group. They drew with Morocco, they drew with Spain, and they beat Iran. Iran. Yeah, yeah, Spain were pretty poor. The interesting thing about Spain for me is why they did so bad. It's exactly the same reason as Germany. That they had continuation there. Mm. They're not a new generation where you're like, I have no idea what's going to go on. Well, they sort of like Spain. They did sack their manager the day before the tournament. Yeah, no, but I still think in terms of footballing ability, they're still... The, the team that won the World Cup eight years ago, your PKs and Ramoses are still there, your Iniesta is still there, mm. you know, you're, from the last few tournaments, your Koke is still in there, your Thiago is still in there, your Carver Howes, the Albers. They're still like... It's not like they're new to this whole thing. Those, that is probably one of the most experienced squads at the World Cup in terms of getting far as well and winning things. Yeah. So they, they were surprised me the most. Germany as well. Apart from, 
I think it was Goethe, Hervedes, Schmelzer and a few others were pretty much the same team that won it four years ago. Yeah, Germany were really terrible. <laughs> Germany were yeah. really, really awful. I know that they, they had a bit of a get out of jail, uh, get out of jail card with that Sweden. tiny cruise goal yeah. against Sweden. But the the rest of their performances, they were so poor. They were so poor against Mexico and so bad against why. South Korea. Um, I, just, I just don't know why. Complacency, I guess, isn't it? I, we've seen we've seen it in the last three World Cups. A champion goes out in a group stage. I think I don't know what happens. Maybe it's a mental thing. I don't know if it's maybe a, a you lose that sort of appetite, maybe in the sort of desperation to win, or mm. you get too confident, or maybe the maybe the standard of, of of the bad teams in the World Cup is getting better. I'm not sure. But it, it's, yeah. a, it's a weird trend. For the well, that doesn't World matter Cups. because next time there'll be loads more teams involved in the World Cup, which yeah. means there'll be loads more rubbish ones. Yeah, I was going to say it. That's the wrong words. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't mind. Who, who are you going for for biggest flop then? Um, it has to be Germany for me. Yeah. Bottom of the group. Oh, well, yeah. champions. It bottom of the group containing South Korea, Sweden, and Mexico. With no disrespect to them, Mexico had a pretty good game, but they they should be winning that. Yeah, at least going through. And then our final one is surprise package of the tournament. I think it's pretty pretty easy to go for Croatia for, for Croatia, this one. Yeah. Really, country of 4.4 million people getting us for <laughs> doing yeah, as well true. as they did. I uh, think I, again, especially, especially after they spent because it looked. They were brilliant in the group stages, but it looked like the wheels might come off when they had you know, Nikola Kalinic being sent home. Yeah. It looked like there's a little bit of squad unrest. And then obviously they, they got the two penalty shootouts, which was, you know, you think, oh God, maybe they're tiring. They've had the extra time then to go as far. Yeah, again, a similar thing with Mbappe. I think Croatia were people's dark horses because they were well known and not necessarily breaking through to, you know, completely out of nowhere. Croatia aren't out of nowhere. Everyone knows the, Mo the Modric Rakitic kind of midfield axle. Yeah, they're, but they're yeah. not. They're, they're, they're no they're not, one was talking about them to win it, were they? No, not at all. But they were still weren't relatively unknown. I think in terms of biggest surprise for a team or overachievers, I'll actually put Sweden in the hat. To, yeah. to, to come without Ibrahimovic, who's been their talisman and who's carried them to tournaments for the last 12, 15 years at least, and get to the quarterfinals. Um, mm. Admittedly, it was a you know, pretty poor showing against England in the quarters. But to get there, to finish top of that group yeah. with Mexico, Germany, Korea, I think Sweden are for a shot. I mean, the fact that obviously Croatia did so well, um, you, you can't really look past them. But I just think yeah. a special <laughs> shout out to Sweden um, for doing that. Of all the quarterfinalists, I'm sure they were the most unlikely to be there. Yeah. Maybe Russia. I'm still... Of course, yeah. Russia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, true. Russia, who went in, obviously, yes, hosts, but also... Worst ranked. Yeah. Although they technically probably wouldn't worse. I didn't that work because they already qualified, means they didn't have yeah, a chance so to less, play qualification to pick up points. But it was still the first time uh, they were still the lowest ranked team to get to something or other. Until Qatar. Do you know what? I was halfway through making up a stat that I might have read there. <laughs> and I think that's a good time to say, we'll, we'll leave to all these categories. Quits. We'll leave all these categories in the, in the comments. So best player, golden glove, biggest disappointment, shittest bloke, breakthrough player, uh, crowd pleasers, surprise package, biggest flop. We'll stick that in the comments. And obviously this is completely opinion. So you stick all your choices in there as well. And we can all think back on that lovely, lovely, lovely month that we called football. The 2018 FIFA World Cup. And now we just wait until Qatar. I'll wait to the Premier League. I think I'm decent with that. <laughs> I'll wait to the return of football around Fo Europe, around the globe. Talk about it's coming home. Yeah. Qatar is home. 2022. The home of football. <laughs> To Qatar and hopefully our free tickets. Yeah. Four years time, you might be successful by then. We'll see you next time. Get all your opinions in the comments. Feel the comment section. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.